Barrister Ifanyi Ejofo, the lawyer representing the detained leader of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra IPOP, Nam Dekano has raised the alarm over his deteriorating health condition due to his solitary confinement and mental torture he's allegedly subjected to by the security agency. The G4 while featuring Monday on Good Morning Show on Arise TV, the broadcast arm of this day, said there were urgent need for his doctor to attend to him before it was too late. He said Kano was brought into the country last Sunday after being detained, maltreated and subjected to all forms of inhumane treatment and inflicted with severe injuries due to the handcuffs that were put on his hands for hours before he was brought to court. Ijofo lamented that he was not informed by the prosecution panel that his client had been adopted and kidnapped from Kenya and brought into the country to appear before the court last Tuesday. He added that if at all there were transparency in what the federal government had done, the prosecuting panel should have informed him that Kano would be charged to court that Tuesday. Ijofo stated, there is an underlying fact that my client will not get a fair trial in that court. That is settled. The issue of fair trial has been taken away by this collaboration, but we'll keep on watching and we're going to see them in court. I've seen him and he has given me every information and details about what transpired in Kenya, how he was arrested, how he was taken to an unknown destination, and how he was maltreated and how they nearly killed him over there. And it is obvious from what he told me that it was at the behest of the federal government that they were doing those things until when they beckoned to them to come. This is against an obvious infractions of all international laws and treaties. But we are going to address it at that level. It is obvious from every indication that my client will not get a fair trial in this court until when the contrary is established, he said. Ijofor recalled that before Kanu was granted bail, he spent over two years in prison, adding that the court itself was aware that he was in prison custody before he was granted bail. He said at that point he was in prison. Kanu did not at any time make any effort to leave the prison without a judicial process. Following his adoption from Kenya, Ejefo lamented that the Department of State Security Services, DSS, had made it near impossible for his relatives and well-wishers to visit him except on appointment by his lawyer since he had been remanded in custody, saying that in itself is mental torture. According to him, he's been subjected to mental torture as I speak with you, because when someone is in incarceration as a political prisoner, which he is, he has no access to his wife, he has no access to his brothers, he has no access to his relatives to interact with them. Even lawyers who are coming to see him are coming with a specific approval by the Director General of SSS. So it shows that he is undergoing mental torture and it is worse still that Una Nikano is under a debilitating health situation. He further said that his health needs to be addressed as soon as possible, stressing that it is only a living that can face trial. Ejefo said that the fact that there was a warrant of arrest for Kanu cannot stop the country from going into extradition process before the extradition can be granted by that country. He said, by Section 35.6 of the Constitution, Kanu is presumed innocent until proven guilty, stressing that at the moment a lot of things are going on while alleging that people are being paid to confess against Kanu. Ejafor insisted that Kanu never jumped bail, adding that if the federal government was serious about prosecuting him, they would have allowed him to come to court on September 14, 2017 to face his trial before his house was invaded and people killed. His lawyer pointed out that if he had been killed when his house was invaded in 2017 and over 28 people were killed, they wouldn't be talking about his trial today. Ejofo said that all these facts will be presented before the court while insisting that Kanu never violated his bail condition. He stressed that he will be filing a preliminary application today, Monday, which will be entertained before July 26th when Kanu was billed to appear before the court because of his health was deteriorating. Ejofo said that he will be going to court to ensure his health was attended to by his doctors. He, however, alleged that his own life was under threat because he was defending IPOB while calling on the federal government to protect him from those who are after his life. 
A Jafar recalled that before Kanu was arrested in 2015, a three count charge was preferred against him, but added that subsequently the federal government filed an amended 11 count charge. He said he filed an injunction to the charges and the court struck out eight of it. He recalled that the court ruled that three count charge preferred against him cannot be substantiated, but the court gave the prosecutor the benefit of doubt to establish the charge against him. A Jafar said those counts struck out by the court had now been reversed by the federal government. He noted that Kanu, being a political prisoner, a 45-year man, legal team, would be out together to defend him in court. Everyone knows that uh, President Mohamed Buhari is doing all that he can. So, you know, the lawyer even alleged that right now, um, they are paying people to testify against Nandi Khan. I don't know if we heard about um, uh, um, uh, uh, a supposedly IPOP member who stated that uh, um, they, they, used, uh, they, they used charms. And they were just saying a lot of things that they did um, in the order of um, Nandi Khan, that Nandi Khan gave order. The lawyer is stating that right now, because the federal government is bent, that Unam Dikano is a thorn on the flesh of President Muhammad Buhari, they would cook up all sorts of stories, pay anyone they want to pay. You know, these days, people don't have conscience anymore. They can take any amount of money to testify against someone. Well, all everyone is asking for is a fair trial. Even the international community, the United States, won President Muhammad Buhari that issue and show that uh, Unam Dikano gets a fair trial. Not just that, what is most important right now is his well-being, his health. The lawyer has just um, lamented that um, Nan Dikano's health is deteriorating due to solitary confinement. He's not speaking to anyone, he's just being locked up. That his uh, um, health is deteriorating and he pointed out that it's only the living that can actually uh, um, testify. It's only the living that can uh, face a trial, go through a trial. At the end of the day, all of this that they are doing, if... Um, uh, um, anything happens to Nam Dekanu, who's going to face the trial? That's what the lawyer is stating. The Jafar is stating that it's only the living that can um, face trial. So Nam this should be looked after properly. It should be looked after properly. I don't know why they would want to treat him this way, but it is obvious. It is the obvious, guys. President Muhammad Buhari wants to finish Nam Dekanu. He doesn't want anything. He wants to just end it. But because everyone is watching, I don't think he'll be able to do anything because he's been warned that Nam Dekanu should not die in detention. If anything happens to him, then um, he's setting himself up for big trouble. Well, guys, let's hear your take down below in the comment section. I don't know if this alarm that the lawyers have raised, if the federal government will be able to relax anything or see to um, his health condition. But let's hear your thoughts. Thank you once again for staying tuned. Please don't forget to like, share, and to subscribe. Till I come your way again with more updates. Bye.